Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the one, the only, welcome to the Race Face GT3 Sprint Series. My name is Stephen Koenig, and joining me in the box is the one, the only, Yanaman Press. Yanaman, how are you doing this evening? And I think Yanaman has muted. Okay, so uh, you'll be yeah, joining... Yeah, sorry, wrong button. <laughs> I was still busy checking the points out here, but good evening, everybody. Yes, it's good to be back. And we are racing on local soil for a change at Kyalami. Now, that's it. We have uh, finally come home, one could say. And I'm really looking forward to being back here at Kyalami. But let's take a look at the circuit while we go around. You're going to head down the start-finish line into turn one, which is a very, very slight kink. And it counts as turn one due to it's at a 15 degree angle. Down into Crowthorn, hard on to the brakes, into the left hander. Got to carry the momentum through before you make it up through the S's into Barbecue. And uh, turning left by the old pits, which is uh, sort of still standing at this point in uh, the current configuration. In through Sunset, maintaining at least a third gear and try and feather the throttle the whole way through it before you get back onto the power on the exit. Heading into Clubhouse before you slam on the anchors. Left-hander, short little straight. Down into the S's. Left, right, and away we go. But uh, it's going to be an interesting one for all the drivers to uh, to go and deal with. And uh, not quite sure how all the drivers are going to be able to handle the fight coming through. Yes, it's... Well, let's put it this way. I think Kyle Army, due to the fact that it's a local track, is a favorite of a lot of the drivers. Uh, it's a track that most of these drivers know like the back of their hand. We mean, done a lot of racing around Kyle Army. Always good to be back. And I must say, Stephen, it's good to commentate for a change on a track that we've actually been around. And, uh, and we know what's, what's going on around the track. I started grading turn two before I even uh, even got to turn, you know, before the graders got there. I went and parked it off with a Formula Ford. Uh, but just carrying on through the S's up to Leacorp. Now, Leacorp is one corner that I'd like to point out because also known as, used to be known as uh, West Bank, where you're at the top of the hill. It also has its own, well, weather biome if i can put it that way if it's pouring down at the s's by crowthorn it's dead dry that's it it's it's guaranteed it's going to be as dry as a bone or the other way around then you got to go standing on the throttle all the way down through the mine shaft into what used to be called the bowl uh, i think it's got some other name now crocodile crocodile yeah going to crocodile see i'm still on the the old uh the old one where you go down into the bowl uh so you make your way through crocodile heading towards cheetah now the old track used to have a kink right on right before the cheetah it was actually not a not a kink it was more of a chicane and then you get yourself going it's now called cheetah all aka you're gonna launch a gt3 car six foot in the air with no questions asked as you go and catch the sausage curb on cheetah on the right hand side before you hit the brakes and go into the sharp left hand of Ingwe, where you actually can open up the steering a little bit earlier than planned, getting on the throttle early on and try and get that drive all the way down the main straight once again. Anyone that's sitting behind you will have a very valuable tow. Yeah, I mean, I think we're going to see some very close racing tonight. As I mentioned before, uh, the drivers do know the track fairly well, 99% of them as we're starting to have a look at qualifying and uh, no times posted yet very early stages of qualifying still qualifying has just started so uh let's see what mr ryan ottens can do tonight well, well first we that's, yeah. that's something i do want to touch on because uh, you as you said you were taking a look at the points a little bit earlier on and uh, give us a quick breakdown of what's happening there well, this stage, Ryan Ottens still in the lead, and he's, he's got quite a comfortable lead, Stephen. 223 points at this stage. Second place, SES Razor. He's on the 168. So, Ryan has got a bit of a lead. Uh, two races to go in the championship, so it is drawing to a close. But now things get interesting. Bashir Jadwat in third place on 166. Sanjan Pillay in fourth on 161. 
Van der Merwe in fifth on 159. So there's everything to race for still in those positions. I mean, anybody basically in the top five can still get a podium in the championship. Yeah, and then you got also close battles like Nicholas Manuel, Daniel de Bastos. They also won th uh, Nicholas Manuel with 138 points. Daniel de, Bast uh, de Matos Petro, uh, he's sitting on 134 points. Justin Lotus on 121. Anrik Sikers is just leading out by one point into the top 10 over Mahath Musa, who's in 10th place at 115. Uh, then you've got Le Clou Besson chasing him down 112 points. And that really does shake things up a little bit. But also talking about it, our last race was a bit of a shake-up. So I'm curious to see how the drivers are going to adapt to it. We do have confirmed Stage 6 load shedding at the moment, which does have a couple of drivers out. And taking a look over to the grandstand, so drivers may be out, but they are going and enjoying all the action. We have got Reginald going and saying, how's it as well, which is great. And uh, then we've got Kleinans. He's actually going to be racing, but missing out on qualifying. Uh, we have got Robert McCall saying Morgan, unfortunately, has load shedding, so he's out of it. Josh Herbs also jumping in and saying how's it. So grandstands are packed as well. Uh, Reginald asking a very good question, though, Yarban. What car did you go around at Carl Army? <laughs> well... If I'm not mistaken, it was a Birkin. Oh, Lotus 7 replica, call it. A Birkin, a Birkin 7 with a 2 litre and a sequential shifter, if I remember correctly. And, I, and unfortunately, I wasn't the guy driving. Um, I had a total madman at the steering wheel by the name of Michael Koenig. Yep. No, that's it. And uh, my escapades around Kyle Army has been in various between single seaters and historic race cars and sports cars it's been interesting it's been very interesting but definitely not in a gt3 car like what these guys are doing and i've tried pedaling around in a gt3 car like we're seeing out on circuit and i just can't quite get the same times already a 141 195 my best lap time was a 145 uh, at at a full tilt i got it down to a 144 but it got a little bit sketchy from that point Ryan well, Otten's leading out the field, but it does look like Daniel Demaltros Petro is starting to put pressure on. Justin Lotus in third, Nicholas Manuel in fourth, Daniel Rowe in fifth. As you said, times are still rolling in. It's still early on. Ten minutes of qualifying to go, but this is going to be a proper little bit of fun. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, those times are definitely going to come down. And I think rolling to the 40s tomorrow evening might even see a 39 or two, but... Uh, all depending on the track conditions. Now, talking about track conditions, Stephen, are we going to see a high felt thunderstorm? You think? <laughs> I think it is very, very possible to see. But one thing that has been talked about is it getting into the dark. And that's something I do want to talk about because it's at sunset at the moment. It's five minutes past six in game time which means it is going to get dark out on that circuit, which means your brake markers are going to fade into oblivion at this point. So you've got to rely on pure memory as you see Sanjin Pillay. He's throwing the car around, trying to get himself going, that, that cheetah being a little bit more elusive than he planned. Yeah, they're going to go flat out through there, and one of you are going to see one or two touches of that sausage curve throughout the evening. As we have a look at fees going through Sunset now, Daniel De Villiers, they still sporting their Springbok colours. Uh, can we say the genuine Springbok colours after all the comments that are <laughs> that have been flying around since the since the weekend? Oh. We will not uh, mention anything, but uh, <laughs> I've... funny to funny to not actually see them on bikes. They're actually on four wheels. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Uh, they they're going and cruising around and a little bit more than 60 seconds around the circuit but getting there getting there it's yeah, i'd give it about a yeah, it's if you convert it into a bit of time it should be fine and we just are we just short of a 60 minute race tonight as well yeah that's it we uh we managed to get that one right um <laughs> moving swiftly <laughs> on though 27 cars are going to be racing around the circuit 
and uh, currently 21 cars have posted a time. We do know that Johan Kleinans is serving a quali penalty, so he will not be going out. Yeah, he's busy playing Lego in the pits at this stage. And also having a chat to everyone on the grandstands, which is uh, good to see him back in the chat because we've been miss we've been missing the usual uh, commenter in the, the whole point. So it's going to be very, very interesting to see how it works out. Um, lots of guys talking about the elevation changes around Kalami and in a sim, it's quite hectic. That's for certain. But I can tell you soon as you get into the the real deal uh motion rigs and sim rigs can't quite replicate how your stomach drops into your no. uh, into your boots but i can tell you what happens to drivers if they miss out on some of the corners like barbecue over here as we see ses days in air force one trying to make his way through as he gets into the s's now it's just trying to get yourself down the hill i've got to say i love the s's uh, it's also been the first place i ever broke down at uh, was the first S. But it's one if you don't get the momentum right, you can kill the drive as you then head up the hill all the way to the, the top of the mine shaft and then make your way down. And that can absolutely hamper you. So drivers are going to have to remember to keep that flow, follow the elevation changes and follow what they need to do. I do think turn two is going to be interesting though because since it is such a wide uh circuit when you make your way through you can be caught out rather quickly well there's actually a couple of places around this track Stephen, where you can be caught up especially if you're a little bit blindsided and uh you know just missed a break mark or two it it can lead to to your uh, breaking yourself running a bit wide you know two places to come to mind is up to leo Corp, as we see them go through there now actually and then also the last corner if you follow closely through cheeto i mean you can just miss that break mark of the last corner be blindsided and that kind of result you're running wide onto the pit straight and losing all that drive yeah and you can see ryan ottens actually coming off the throttle down the mine shaft just to give a bit of room obviously not going to make up some time through crocodile carry the momentum you can see how the circuit is actually a lot wider than you think then it narrows up all of a sudden you've got to try and do it but here's the corner that you're talking about into the final corner and it takes a very very late apex and uh, i know for a habit i always take a very very early apex there and lose out a bit of drive especially in the gt3s now down towards here's turn one there we go 15 degrees and now down towards turn two we're going to be slamming on the anchors at 100 meters and really got to tuck that nose in if you don't have a car that's going to work with you you will land up in a world of hurt up through a little bit of the s a bit of an s and then into by the old pits where you just get the run mainly we see off tracks there and also penalties start coming into play because you can drop a wheel off the dirt so quickly this is where people usually start feeling the rear of the car start to snap underneath them as they lift off the power on entry and it's something i know the old porsche used to struggle with when it uh, went around that specific corner uh, you reckon um i uh lost sight of the track on a couple of occasions through sunset with the old porsche <laughs> <laughs> you see the Think you're still right and then all of a sudden it just says nope you're going left my friend yeah it's not going to work with you at the moment though ryan ottens managing to get that 140.5 as a uh, q and duper c doing a 141.4 uh, daniel demarchas pretro getting a bit closer uh, uh sorry q and duper c did a 140.725 then daniel demarchas pretro 140.762 so the guys are trying to push themselves a little bit more, trying to get a little bit more momentum. Nicholas Manuel, 140.7. And being round seven, second last round of the series for 2023, there's so much to play for, so much on the line for all the drivers up and down through the field. Absolutely. We, we, we saw it when, uh, when we had a look at the championship standings. You know now exactly you are racing in that championship and a lot of the battles are very close i mean steven the top 10 we can say is very close there's still numerous battles in there that uh, has not been uh, finalized yet two races to go and it's it's still anybody's game at this stage and who knows there might even be an upset or two and uh, somebody can dethrone mr ryan ottens as we see 
Daniel Rowe on track for a change. Yeah, Daniel Rowe returning after his uh, his hiatus. Justin Lotus trying to get a little bit of momentum. He's in seventh place. SES Days in eighth. Ronaldo Busma up into ninth position. Tenth is Mahayath Musa, uh, who really does enjoy the circuit. The BMW not liking the curbs as much as it used to at this point. Anrik Sikha is also getting a bit of momentum. He's in eleventh. Sanjin Pillay, Leclerc Basson. Harry Dupassi, Johan van der Merwe, who was who won our uh, last week's sprint race, so keep an eye on him. Daniel, the hitman de Villiers, after getting used to a new set of pedals, has moved himself into 16th. Ramona Yonka, Cameron de Bastos, Tenian Kube. Then we've got Darren Miller, Tienas Buerta. For fears, he's also out in 22nd. Isam Domingo in 23rd. 24th, Dean Cabasa, followed by Hansi Meyerberg, Jaco Krobler. Mm. Oh, and there's uh, Dean Cabasa getting all acquainted to the dirt and yeah, killing all of the signboards. Yeah. yeah. That's it. One brake marker gone. That 50 meter board that you were looking for is uh, currently gone. So find another one. Ryan Otson's putting in a better lap time. 140.4 as he comes across the line. Then you've got the likes of uh, Jaco Krobler in 26th and Clanant's going to be starting in 27th with that penalty. Couple of guys starting to move up. Christopher Radloff moving himself into second place ahead of QN Dupassi. Uh, Daniel Demarcho Petro trying to make as much time as possible to get going. So it's all going to be on the line for every single driver. But we're starting to see those headlights glow more and more which tells me it's getting a little bit darker out there and come the end of the race i think we will be racing under the lamps of kailami racetrack what lamps no oh, it's i would i would say the the spotlights but uh, the spotlights require a fair <laughs> amount of power and we've we've got to be understanding there isn't a lot of power going well, on so i know. see in Dotted. the grandstand, there has been reference that it that it looks like they're heading into load shedding in the race. So uh, let's hope that the the race lights still work at the start of the race. Yeah, no, it's going to be a very interesting one, and the drivers going to have to be well aware of it. It's going to be our first night race, if I am correct, of the sprint series for this season season 10 so i'm really looking forward to seeing how the drivers are going to adapt to the situation at hand and figure out what's going to be the right thing to do uh, i think last season they dealt with elton alton park in the wet and in the dark which did not quite help anything as well but uh with a little bit of load shedding coming in and qualifying ending in four seconds yanaman those times are coming in thick and fast and first place is still Ryan Ottens. Christopher Adloff just wasn't able to dethrone it. But take a look at the difference. 0.048. Q and Dupassi was taking third place. Daniel Demarchos Petro taking fourth. Nicholas Manuel in fifth at the moment. Daniel Rowe in sixth. Seventh is Ronaldo Boisma, followed by Justin Lotus. SES Day still trying to get a little bit more grunt out of it out of the car to get a little bit closer and Unrik Sikers as well that is completing our top 10 so all the drivers are doing everything they can to just get those final little laps in that little bit of time looking for that point one of a second like what Unrik Sikers has at the moment can he keep it going through the final corner oh, I think he's gone out too wide there lost the drive and that's going to pretty much set him back in order as yesterday is trying to move forward then you got Kerry Dupassi coming across the line. Can he move out of 14th position? No, unable to do it. Isam Domingo, though, is up on his lap. He's 0.8 up. Now making his way through. Through Cheetah. Just able to get the apex. Very, very close to the track limits. Late apex into the final corner. Getting back onto the power. But will he be able to keep up the momentum to drop him up? And does Drops him into 15th position. So uh, a last minute mad dash to get into the top. Yeah, we normally see that kind of thing in qualifying where the guys leave it out late, try to get in the last flying laps after the checkered flag came out, much like Formula One also. But Stephen, have a look at the front there. I mean, you're talking about the top 10, basically separated by half a second. And then we can say the top 19 call it the top 20 separated by a second so it just shows how close these times are 
Yeah, I know. It's going to be a properly quick field we have at the moment. And I think Leerkorp is going to be a very interesting passing location for the start of the race, especially who can warm up their tires first. But let's go down to the circuit where we see the drivers lining up. Ryan Ottoms will be starting in first place. Christopher Radloff in second. Kieran Dupassi in third place. Then we're followed by Daniel Demartres Pritro along with Nicholas Manuel, Daniel Rowe, Ronaldo Boersma, Justin Lotus, SES Ace, Anrik Sukas, Mahayath Musa, Sanjin Pele, Le Clubasson, Harry Dupassi, Issam Domingo, Johan van der Merwe, Cameron de Bastos, Daniel the Hitman de Villiers, Ramona Yonker, Tini and Kube, Darren Miller, Tiernas Buerta, Jean Fafiers, along with Jakob Krobler, Dean Kabasa in 25th, 26th, Hansi Mayberg and 27th is Plainans who served a qualification penalty. So he's starting right at the back and hoping that he can get past. I see that Grant Sebastian is not in the field. Biermestein also jumping in the chat as well. Bago Krobler going and uh, saying how's it. His birthday was a little bit earlier on. So maybe he's recovering after having a party with Paul Fenter. Uh, then we have got uh, Eric Kirstein, unfortunately unable to make it as well. He's uh, keeping an eye. So quite a few people out in the grandstands having a chat to us, but even more just going to be watching all the action as the cars lined up. But there's a beautiful shot. And I mean, if we had to just blank that out right now and just uh, appreciate... All the GT3s lined up right behind Cheetah. What a magnificent sight as they turn on and the lights come ablaze. Absolutely, Stephen. And also awesome sound as these cars go around the track, you know, especially at a place like Kyle Army where you've got the hills around you. And, uh, you know, that sound just reverberates through you. But they are off. Not a long time to heat up brakes and tires for the all important, not turn one in this case, but turn, turn two. two. Turn one is turn one is flat out. Turn yeah. one is, is nothing. That's not a worry. Turn two is where you're going to need a little bit of braking to happen. But uh, I'm going to hand it over to you. Right. Making their way through. Jim on the lights. Tim on the cameras. Bob with the speed gun as we get ready to go. 70 kilometers now, side by side, waiting for it. Who's going to get the jump on the line? Wait for green, wait for green, and away we go. Ryan Ottens are getting a little bit of a jump on his teammate, Christopher Radloff, as Daniel Demarchos Petro getting right behind. He's looking up on the inside, trying to make it three wide. Kuhn Dupassi tries to look on the inside, backs out of it as they all come filtering through. Daniel Rowe going and making a three wide and going a little bit off circuit, trying to get past the likes of Daniel Demarchos Petro. And a little bit of rubbing and racing there. Nothing bad. Looks up on the inside. Daniel trying to go defensive. A little bit of argy-bargy again. And drivers are absolutely stomping it around. All fighting for position. Sanjin Pillay getting ahead of Unrek Sikers. But this is a battle for fourth and fifth. Currently happening out of circle. It's with Nicholas Manuel keeping close behind. Justin Lotus also getting involved. Ronaldo Boersma going on the defense. Holding back Sanjin Pillay as he's got Unrek Sikers coming back at him. Mahayath Musa in 11th position also getting a little bit of a jump off the line. Daniel De Villiers trying to carry the momentum through in the Lamborghini on the back of the BMWs as now they make their way up into Leerkorp. You can see all hunting for the inside line, outside line. And it looks like Unric tires to go for the dive, unable to do so. Sanjin Pillay trying to get the dive as now they make their way down the mineshaft. It's going to be a proper little battle as see who's got the momentum to carry it through hard onto the brakes into crocodile all the drivers doing everything i can but i see we do have a spinner and that is darren miller at the top of the hill so darren miller now way way out of the race going to have to figure out what he can do and what strategies are going to come into play and that's something we are going to talk about as you see SES says pull into the pits for his pit stop yeah, I think there's, well, it's actually interesting to see only AC diving into the pits at this stage. So it does look like he's the only driver that opted for the lap one pit stop as we see the drivers battling their way around, Stephen. But I think we're going to see some interesting strategies tonight. I wanted to say some of the drivers are going to pit early. Otherwise, other drivers are going to leave it out very, very late as we have a look at this battle with them. Cameron DeBastos making his way around. 
they go side by side to the sea. Yeah, yeah. Duplessis has got now Tinny and Kube. So he lost out the drive to Cameron de Bastos. And now Tinny and Kube in the green Lamborghini is dealing with Kerry Duplessis just ahead of him. And take a look at Isam Domingo around the outside through Sunset. Very, very brave. But he's just hoping that BMW is going to bite. But the train's not breaking as much as most drivers would like it to be. As uh, everyone's still keeping relatively close to the competitions. I think they're going to try and keep it as close as possible. And uh, then back to the strategy. I think you're going to try and figure out if you're being held up or not. And uh, at this early stages of the race, it is an option to pit early. Kyle Army, the lap times are fairly long in the 1 minute 40s. Low 1 minute 40s. So you can do that early pit stop and still get out well in front of the leaders but you're going to have to do it soon if you leave it too long you're going to fall too far back and you might fall into their clutches as tini and kubi they're going side by side oh they're going to so go side by side through cheetah that's what i wanted to say well fafir's landed up with a problem comes back on isam domingo capitalizes on it he gets past and he's going to battle it out but you could see fafir's having a bit of a run there as he landed up with Tianus Buerta trying to get around him and Tianus is also putting a huge amount of pressure there is Johan Kleinans who started in last place he's trying to do a late dive a late lunge on the inside but just not able to get it all up and going back up to the front though Daniel Rowe under pressure from Daniel Demetrius Petro and Nicholas Manuel who are keeping very very close in tow and like the stormtroopers they are going to ensure that no one escapes. <laughs> Keeping everybody in check as this is currently a tremendous battle going on between the Genesis drivers and the hybrid drivers. They're really mixing it up on track as we see Daniel DeMotos Petro following Daniel Rowe around. He's trying to get under the rear wing of that Ferrari as they climb the hill up to Liu Corp. Hard on the brakes now, but he's not close enough at this stage, Stephen. I think he will still have to make up a little bit of time can daniel get the power down sometimes very difficult to get the power down through there the rear end of the car does want to step out especially if you run low tc settings as they go through the ball on their way to crocodile but now sanjan pilla he's got musa behind him for company so uh, following in the tracks of that ferrari so he's trying to maximize that slipstream and close up under braking maybe a you know lining him up for a pass down the pit straight who knows well, he's trying everything. We saw in the background he was really going for it. And I see Fafir's landing up in a problem at the bottom of uh, Crocodile. Isam Domingo was landed up in that contact and Kleinan. So let's see if we can go back about 30 seconds and see what happened. But uh, Fafir is having a bit of a rough ride. Here is on board with, uh, well, going with Kleinan. And let's see what happens to Fafir's. He goes up on the inside of the BMW, lands up with contact with Domingo. Domingo is able to bring it back, but uh, Fafir is having landed up, pointing in the wrong direction. Kleinan's giving a little bit of a, a shoulder rub to the likes of Isam Domingo and saying, I'm coming through, you didn't have the drive, and you landed up with the problem. So uh, I'm going to keep going. Yeah, interesting battles going out on track. I mean, it's 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 a sprint race, Stephen, and that's what we're going to see throughout the race. It, the sprint races throughout the season have seen this battles up and down the field. I mean, sometimes we, we literally didn't know where to look and which battle to focus on. Well, at the moment, everyone is so close to one another. But at the moment, Ryan Ottens leading out the field with Christopher Radloff in second place. Q and Dupesee is in third fourth place daniel rowe followed by daniel demarchus petro nicholas manuel justin lotus ronaldo Buersma keeping close by sanjan pillay dealing with mahayath musa who's all over the back of him daniel de villiers breaking early and that's allowing the clubus on to get a little bit closer jan van der merwe is uh tailing onto the back of their their train along with kerry duplessis tinny and kube in 15th 16th is Tianus Buerta, Johan Kleinans, Isam Domingo, Dean Kabasa also putting up a major fight at the moment as uh, he's got Jaka Krubler a little bit further back, Darren Miller even further back. It's trying to get his Lamborghini all together. SEA Stace, Unric Sickers managing to rejoin after getting a bit of a toe. Uh, Cameron DeBastos oh, getting way out of shape 
was able to save it, but that's allowed Ramon Yonka to close down the distance. And then Hansi Myberg just keeping involved with the fire. See Miller, though, spun out on the final corner. That's lost two positions. He's about to lose a lot more there because he's going to have absolutely no drive as he allows Cameron DeBastos and Ramon Yonka to get past him without an issue at this point. Yeah, as you said, Stephen, that last lap or last corner spin hurts a lot as we see Sajan Pele and Musa battling it out. They're just going to go side by side and uh, Musa backing out, deciding to follow Sajan Pele through the S's. Maybe try again as they go up to Liu Corp. Don't think it's close enough. He's going to try and tuck into the rear wing of that Ferrari. Let's see who's going to break the latest. Following a wider line, maybe trying a cutback and uh, getting on the power a little bit earlier. Let's see if it works out for him. But Stephen absolutely mirroring what Pillay is doing in front of him. He's really trying to run as close as possible to the rear end of that Ferrari. Yeah, it's absolutely incredible stuff. And one thing I've got to point out, the Ferrari 296 versus BMW M4 GT3. The Ferrari's got quite a bit more rotation versus the BMW. The BMW, a little bit easier on tires, does have a bit of understeer. It is also easier to drive compared to the Ferrari. The Ferrari demands that it's a very physical car, that you've got to throw the car around to keep it all in check. I see Le Clou Besson pulling into the pit, so he's getting himself sorted out. Uh, but the BMW is able to carry the momentum a lot more and doesn't hit you as hard as a driver compared to the Ferrari. But the Ferrari, if you can get it all together, is a properly quick little car to try and pull away from the BM. Yeah, it's all about the rotation, Stephen, and, and you mentioned getting it right. And uh, interesting to see, and we've spoken about it before, a lot of drivers decided to go to the mid-engine cars, the Ferraris, the Lamborghinis, even the McLaren. And uh, not seeing any Porsches out tonight, but there are people still like Christopher Radloff, Bursma, Musa, and Isam Domingo that are sticking with the front engine cars. And uh, maybe it's a case like me with driving style that they just suit you better. Well, the one thing you also got to consider is how much effect you're having on your tires. 55 minutes now. Yes, it's getting darker. Track's getting cooler. It's 22 degrees out there on circuit. But the drivers are having to push these cars a little bit more. They miss their brake markers. They start scrubbing off speed, especially here into Crocodile, where you've got to slam on the anchors so late and then just try and throw the car in. And Cheetah also tightening up on you if you just get it wrong. You're sliding the car around and that's just hurting your rears and the front engines and also a couple of other cars that just can't get those front tires to just buckle in as much as they would like to carry the pace through the corners. Yeah, and also remember this is an open setup series so the drivers are allowed to tinker with the setups. They can, they can set the car up to their liking some drivers preferring a bit more high downforce as we see uh, Duplessis having a look on the inside of Van Merwe, but uh, not close enough at this stage. Needs to follow him through the first sector. But uh, quickly back, Stephen, before we head off to this battle, some drivers prefer a more loose setup. They say loose is fast. Other drivers prefer a bit more high downforce in order to try and maximize corner speed and so forth. Yeah, no, that's it. And... Uh... Each of these drivers absolutely dominating at the moment, putting in some fantastic time. So far, quickest lap time set was done by Daniel Demetrius Petro, a 140.990. And I do want to point out that was done on his last lap. And this is what he can see out his front windscreen, getting darker and darker every single time. It's getting easier to miss that brake marker that's ahead of you, a slight lift off the throttle as he makes his way down through Mineshaft. And uh, all the drivers just taking a little bit more tentative through the corners now, trying to be a little bit more calm, except for the guys a little bit towards the back. Isam Domingo and Dean Cabasa, they're going to keep it nice and close to one another. They point three over second. You can see that McLaren doing everything possible. We saw Cameron going and having a bit of a snap over steer that he had to go and counteract. Will Dean Cabasa have the same problem? No, nope, seems to be all okay. But Isam Domingo in that big BMW is uh, pretty much being a ginormous chicane at the moment to try and get past 
and it's not going to be an easy run. A little bit further down, 20th and 21st, SES is getting the jump on Jaco Krobler. So Ferrari getting ahead of the BMW. Then you've got Cameron de Bastos in 23rd, uh, fighting out with Ramon Ionka right on the back of him. Do want to point out, SE though is in 20th position and has completed all his pit stops. So he is in a race right to the end at this point. Yeah, deciding to go early and... Uh... I think he hoped for some clear air, which he didn't get. So he's got Krobler for company, and just behind Krobler is uh, Siegers. So uh, I think this is maybe holding him up a little bit. Maybe Siegers can keep Krobler busy and allow uh, Essi to just open up that gap a little bit, getting to that clear air he was aiming for in order to make up decision, uh, positions in such a way. It's actually a big yeah. undercut if you can call it that, on the rest of the field. If you can get it right, but now with it getting darker and darker, and something we do want to point out is when stuff gets warmer, our tire degradation gets far worse, but uh, it tends to grip up quite easier. Now it's getting cooler, tire degradation's a lot less. Do you think drivers are going to be looking at swapping tires out, especially on a heavy demanding circuit like Kailami? Or do you think they're going to try and run it right to the end of this 55 minutes and just push their luck? I think most of the drivers are going to try and run it to the end. Uh, unless you damage your tires really badly and you've got no option but to change them. But... <clears throat> I don't know if you're going to make the time back up, Stephen. If you change tyres, you need to do it roughly about halfway through the race that you at least give yourself that 25-odd minutes that you can run the quicker lap times. And still, that is a gamble because you can feed into traffic and then your new tyres are going to end you up in a fight where you might damage them or you might lose the lap time trying to make your way past the quicker cars. So, or past the other cars on your new tires so it is a bit of a gamble um i don't know if any any of the drivers are going to opt to change now, tires now i've got a question in these conditions would you rather be the car ahead like what we got of a uh, 12th place Johan van der Merwe, or would you rather be Kerry Dupassi in 13th place who is chasing at the moment considering it's a bit darker lights are on would you rather be ahead or would you rather be behind because it does kind of change your the conditions going on I'd rather be ahead. Um, look, all of them would have done their practice. You get into that rhythm. And if you get into that rhythm, it doesn't matter if it's dark or during the middle of the day. But following a car and focusing on that break, those brake lights of it or the rear tail lights, you know, after a while, especially when it gets really dark, it can get disorientating because what might happen is you start following those tail lights. So if that car goes off track you're so focused on those lights you might just follow them and make the same mistake as the driver in front of you did that's very true that's very true i also want to throw this one if you're the car leading like what um, domingo's got in the three car train he's got all his mirrors full of bright lights left right and center which makes it a little bit hard to guess where the drivers are going it's a little bit less visible to see what the intent is, especially if they make late moves like what we see in Kerry Dupassi trying to do on Jan van der Merwe. He's having to just try and get himself positioned just right to do it. So I think also being the car ahead does have its own, well, caveats for being there. Yeah, it does. Those, you know, make no mistake, those headlights can be a bit uh, off-putting, if you can put it that way, in the rearview mirrors depending on what setup you're running, single screen in the single rear view mirror, and on triples in both your, your side mirrors as well. So yes, it is kind of off-putting, and uh, the lights, depending on your graphic settings, they can actually be quite bright. I can tell you in VR it gets a little bit disorientating, much like real life. It's you constantly turning your head to uh, spot where the lights are as well. So whether you are on a single, triple, or VR, these conditions are always tricky. And I've got to say, I absolutely love it. Racing into the dark does bring a different set of skills needed to claw your way up through the field because you're running on pure muscle memory at a point. You've got to make sure you're braking at the right points. 
and especially if you've got like the 50 meter board heading into crocodile miles away from the circuit you're going to have to try and figure out what's going to work there battle for fourth place so fourth and fifth daniel demarchos Petro versus the likes of daniel rowe you can see daniel rowe trying to walk out daniel demarchos Petro into turn two's inside daniel did look and uh decided to not to uh, go for it so Roe managing just to maintain his position and uh, scooting across something we've seen more than once that these drivers do they walk each other off to the ends of the circuit to just try and close up that option of them doing it and uh, you can get quite easily drawn into a tunnel vision while trying to keep that slipstream and uh, you land up with no room to go for the pass at the end you're going to have to back out and come back at him once again yeah, oh, absolutely. And Daniel doing his utmost best to get past Daniel. So uh, Daniel Demartos Pretro, you know, he's trying to run very close to Daniel Rowe, and we've seen him. I wouldn't say make one or two mistakes, but he has outbraked himself once or twice, and he's taking a fairly tight line through there, trying to get the power onto the rear wheels of that Lamborghini to try and get close to Daniel Rowe. But Daniel Rowe has opened up a slight, a little bit of a gap. Uh, over him at this stage so uh, we'll have to see if Daniel DeMartos Prito can come back at him I wonder if he's trying to preserve the tires a little bit a bit of a go for it and then not go for it oh Isam Domingo Ooh. clawing his way up the hill and uh, oh, that be BMW. damage on that BMW yeah that's not a happy BM at the moment let's What's see what happens S's? this is the S's so going into the S's is where he had the problem diving in Hooking it up right, BMW looking a little bit unsteady. Will it be on the exit of the first S? Drops a wheel. Oh, yeah. there we go. That snap oversteer. And Le Club Basson was fortunate enough not to be, uh, well, assassinated as uh, Domingo was coming back onto circuit. But that's definitely taken the wind out of his sails and will needing a serious repair on it. Unrik Sickers is caught up to the back of SES. I see Tennis Boerter diving into the pits and uh, Boerta trying to get himself sorted out and a bit interesting to see that because Boerta uh, now dropping himself down into 26th position on uh, that pit stop so he's uh, taken a little bit of a, a mid pit stop we haven't gotten all the way down through we haven't reached the halfway point but we're just about there for the drivers to start considering that they need to get back into the pits do their mandatory pit stop from first to 16th though no pit stops done everyone running it out a little bit longer than planned yeah you know as i said to you in the beginning of the race i was actually quite surprised that there wasn't more drivers that put it earlier on remember in the previous races we normally see a couple of guys at the end of the first lap diving into the pits trying to pit stop done but uh maybe steven who knows maybe there are one or two actually starting to think about changing tires especially if the with the track temperature dropping the ambient temperature dropping maybe their tire pressures aren't exactly what they should be and that's why we're seeing one or two cars getting a little bit out of shape maybe they feel the need to adjust and uh, get on a fresh uh, set of boots yeah and you can see harry dupasi going very late on the brakes trying to make it stick and here he is all over the back of Jan van der who's trying to get a little bit more drive at the moment to keep up the pace. And as you said, tire pressures, that's something that we don't get to talk too much about of how that can affect your race and what it can do to go and end up in a world of hurt as you try and make your way around. You can quite easily go and put very high tire pressures to try and keep away heat and see if you can maximize some grip. Uh, but that can land up in a negative situation you can go very low and land up wearing out your tires even quicker at the start of the race like when it comes towards the end you are now on ice as they're catching up to Isam Domingo who has gotten out of the pits after a repair Jan van Merwe did flash his light saying listen I'm coming through just as a warning to our back markers once they see the blue flags put out by our Kalami marshals uh, our I can, I can officially say our Kalami Marshals Association in virtual uh, <laughs> are here at Kalami. <laughs> That's it. They, they, and, uh, they virtually here. They, they, and uh, doing a good, good job as always, even though they are virtually here. Yeah, that's it. 
our KMA, our KMA Marshals. So, yeah, for anyone that doesn't know, go look up the KMA Marshals. It's open for everyone to go and uh, volunteer and uh, also be a part of it. It's quite actually a bit of fun. You get to uh, also, I remember quite a few people, the Kalamia Marshals Association was looking for uh, volunteers to train up for the Kalami 9 hour to go and see the GT3 cars go racing not so long ago. And uh, I had a couple of mates sitting at the top of uh, Leacorp when they had a Lamborghini go, not a Lamborghini, a Mercedes go crashing into the wall long ago. And it was actually my dad. He came back with a badge off the Mercedes that got lobbed into their car lo <laughs> into their marshal post. <laughs> uh, so a little souvenir as a, as a thank you. The driver said, there we go. It's not going to be used in any case. And uh, yeah, sitting with a GT3 badge that was uh, of a very, very expensive accident with a Mercedes. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I, I can I can actually imagine it. It can be great fun and and also very demanding to be a marshal around a track for nine hours. I mean, it's it's not a short time that that the guys used to race around Kyle Army. No, that is perfectly agreed. So let's see how it's all going to go. But for these drivers at the moment, currently out on the circuit, they are sweating like no tomorrow because it's getting dark out there, gentlemen. You know, we're starting to see headlights come ablaze and everyone having to work as hard as they can. Ryan Ottens has even slowed up his pace. He's lost that time, 141.54. Uh, so he's actually come off the gas a little bit. Christopher Radloff as well, 141.577. Kuen Dupasi, 141.585. Daniel Rowe has even slowed up, 141.830. Only person that's starting to get a little bit more momentum underneath him is Daniel Demetrius Breacho, doing a 141.442 as his last lap time. So he's trying to pick up the pace at the moment to get a little bit closer to the likes of Daniel Rowe. Nicholas Manuel is a little bit in no man's land as well. He's got Justin Lotus trying to tail him. Ronaldo Bursma. Sanjin Pele a little bit further back from there. He's trying to carve his way through. Daniel De Villiers along with Johan van der Merwe who's dealing with Kerry Dupasi. Now I do want to bring up these drivers are starting to run into the back markers and uh, Ramona Yonka getting caught out by Cheetah as the yellow flags did get shown up for a little bit. But uh Working through back markers, especially in the dark, requires a different set of skill for both the passing and the car being passed. Especially through sector two, where there normally isn't a lot of places to pass. Now, I am talking uh, specifically from Clubhouse up to Leucorp. You essentially just need to sit behind the car through the SS up all the way to Leucorp before you can actually pass safely otherwise through the s is going to be a bit risky to get past the lap car always a chance of people running wide but uh it's one of the challenges that that the drivers will have to deal with now Stephen, you spoke about ryan ottens letting off the gas a little bit doing mid one minute 41 second lap times do you think they, they're in a bit of a tire preservation mode? I mean, there's no real threat around for Ryan Otters at this stage. I very much doubt if the likes of Christopher Radloff or even Q and Duplessis, which is uh, about three or so seconds behind Ryan Otters, really going to challenge him for that lead? Well, yes and no. Remember, they still need a pit, much like what Harry Duplessis is doing. He's pulled into the pits to uh, try and break away from the battle. He's trying to get himself ahead of these two. SEA Styles leading out of everyone that's done the pit stops and under Sikers all over the back of him trying to get a little bit of pace. So it's, it's good to come off the gas and try and preserve those tires. But at what cost? Future into your race. And you can see Daniel Demarchez Bretro. He's doing everything he can to get onto the back of Daniel Rowe. And I think he's got the other way of going around it being that hyper aggressive pushing as hard as he can trying to lengthen the gap to the rest of the field so he can try and undercut the field but at the same time hurting those tires on the way through so i think there's going to be a bit of an interesting situation here but we did see something last race and it landed up with bago krobler running out of fuel we had morgan mccall running out of fuel we've had a few drivers that were running out of fuel. They ran it too little. 
towards the end and that may be another factor coming into play is the guys have got to consider how much fuel have they preserved for the end of the race and to deal with the race at hand i mean absolutely uh, it can also be as you say doing a little bit of fuel saving but i mean look at the race from a championship perspective as it stands now ryan ottens he's in first place in the championship currently leading the race second place in the championship ses razor he's currently in 16th position but he has completed all his pit stops so he's one mandatory pit stop so we'll have to see how it how it unfolds when when ryan ottens does his pit stop but uh current cars running close to him out on track i mean the closest championship competitor that he's got is uh you know not very close to him at this stage so oh i think it's going to be too close to call uh, this is going to be a race between uh between essie and ryan ottens and we'll have to see where ryan feeds out after he's completed his pit stop well taking a look it takes 24 seconds from entrance to exit of pit lane all our drivers have done it SESA's Enrique Sikers, Ramoni Yonko, Cameron DeBastos it took 24 seconds entrance to exit a splash and dash takes about 5.8 seconds so call it 30 you're getting close to about 30 seconds 29 seconds needed to get in and out of the pits for a splash and dash you have to be at least 30 seconds ahead to be able to maintain your position when you get out of the pit lane and that is if you don't run into any problems and that's something that does need to be noted while well, daniel rowe fights off daniel demarcho's pretro who is also taking the life out of his tires at the moment pushing his last lap time was a 0.41.5 but his fastest lap time was a, a 141.127 so i mean that is just getting quicker and quicker and quicker underneath Daniel Rowe and that's allowing him to push a little bit harder to get onto the back of Q and Duper C just ahead of them so Q and Duper C now getting uncomfortable underneath the collar because suddenly Daniel Rowe's having to push harder because Daniel Demarchos Petro is getting a little bit closer towards him and all of them scanning through realizing that they are needing to pit as we head into the 25 minutes and 20 seconds remaining of round seven of our GT3 sprint series the second last round of the championship and the drivers are going to have to bear that in mind still 26 cars currently out on circuit having a phenomenal run Johan Kleinanso onto the back of Tini and Kube. In Kube taking too much through Sunset. Kleinans up on the inside, locks it in on it and gets the drive just getting early on to the power. And is going to be going after Domingo, who's uh, just a little bit ahead of him. It is going to be a lap down, but you do want to try and carry the momentum through. I mean, absolutely. But uh, the thing I want to say is. I think we can start counting out changing tires. I mean, 15 cars, the top 15 still needing to pit, as well as Miller and Grobler further down. I don't think there will be any use for you now to pit and uh, put on a new set of tires in if it's not within the next four minutes or so. Not, not at all. And I see Hansi Myberg actually uh, got towed back to pit. So Hansi Myberg down in 25th position landed up with a problem and uh is now getting himself sorted out so maybe landed up with a bit of a, a crash and let's see if we can yeah. uh, try and go to him there he is and uh let's see if we can go back roughly 30 seconds oh Ooh. crash into the old pits and i think he dropped Wrong the wheel pits. yeah <laughs> dropped the wheel on the on the outside on the exit and that threw him into the wall landing up with a monstrous impact into the wall and i think it's something i do need to be well aware of is these little uh well little patches of grass that you don't care about in the day suddenly become a very very viable threat as everything gets a bit darker as the race continues on unrick sickers has de is de well gotten past the likes of SESAs. these two are fighting it out they both have completed they put stop both of them doing their pit stops within the same amount of time with the splash and dash they're going to be really keep on the power 
for the remaining little bit as they have to close down a significant distance to our leaders. Yeah, I think at this stage, Essie is not being done any favours that he needs to battle Sirkus now because that's going to hurt his chances with Ryan Alton's out in front. Uh, remember, he needs to finish in front of Ryan Ottens to keep his championship hopes alive, which at this stage, with Sierkes in front of him, uh, not doing him any favours, so he'll have to clear him as soon as possible, but I'm pretty sure Sierkes is not going to back down as we see Duplessis. That looked a bit funny. Yeah, Duplessis, oh, he Ooh. went into the wall. So, through the exit of Clubhouse, got uh, a little bit sideways, caught the wall, and then now trying to get himself back up and going. So he was also a little bit further down than planned. Couple of guys going and impacting themselves a little bit hard out on the circuit. Daniel DeMarcho's Pietro right onto the back of Daniel Rowe, who's still trying everything he can to go and defend like crazy. That Ferrari being stretched out wide to go and take on the bull that is right behind him. And you can see just slight dab of the brakes. They're not slowing down. A uh, lot before the corner. It's uh, something that these drivers, they just give it ever so slight of the, the brakes and just rely purely on the aero to carry the momentum through the S's, which is just down to keeping your foot in and believing something is going to keep you there. And, uh, well, this is why our pro division is as fast as they are. They really push the boundaries of what can happen. You could see even just sweeping across the circuit, Daniel Demartras Pietro is really hunting for any little advantage to get past Daniel Rowe. Yeah, and you mentioned that little dab of the brakes. Uh, oh, he got hold of Cheetah. Yeah, it's going to hurt his drive. Very well done to keep that car pointing the right way. More often than not, when you hit Cheetah like that, uh, you end up facing the wrong way or even into the wall on the left or right-hand side, depending on how you hit it. Now, it's definitely uh, something to be aware of for all the drivers, and they are all battling their way through the racing. Starting to open up, though. That's uh, all getting within roughly about a second. I think it's going to be coming down to pit stops at the moment. Anjurek Sikha is leading out everyone that has gone and pitted so far. He's getting a little bit closer to the likes of Leclerc Besson, who's only 9.1 seconds ahead of him. Tini and Kube getting closer to the likes of Johan Kleinanz as they put the power down. Heading into turn two. Beautiful shot of them going down the undulations of the circuit. The change of camber as they make their way through as well does go and affect these cars and affect your setup. But overall, drivers are now having to consider with 20 minutes and 7 seconds left what's needed to get back out and get going. Where do they need to push the boundaries? What needs to be done? As we see Jan van der Merwe doing everything he can, he just goes in out a little bit wide, loses the momentum through sunset, but gets right onto the back of Daniel de Villiers again. Daniel still trying his best to keep it all together, and you can see how much these cars are moving, swaying left to right. Suddenly the tank getting lighter and lighter, the setups becoming a little bit more different. Big send from van der Merwe. Bails out of it last minute to not have contact with Daniel, the hitman, de Villiers. And uh, Daniel saying, I nearly got assassinated again. And Jan van der Merwe going, no, nah, that was just a warning shot. Don't worry, I'll get you next time. <laughs> yeah, it was a, if it was a warning shot, it was close. Um, but uh, these two, after that uh, hair-raising moment, living to fight another day as they go through Cheetah up to the last corner drive out of this corner Stephen is so important we see Daniel de Villiers covering that inside line that's going to hurt his drive out there so uh Clay uh, uh tucking into not Clay Nance van der Merwe sorry uh, I'm getting all squint eyed trying to focus on a couple of things at once but he's under the rear wing of de Villiers diving to the outside de Villiers again covering that inside line now extremely wide part of the track there Stephen so you can really pick your line and the undercut does look like it's worked the switch back but again de Villiers looking on the inside bailing out of it through there these two are really going at it yeah hammer and tongs both very familiar with one another former well friends and used to be former teammates at one point Johan van der Merwe dealing with Daniel de Villiers as he makes his way through 
uh, trying to get a little bit more of a drive underneath him. I see that we've got yellow flags for Yoko Krobler though, and that is out Ooh. at Crocodile. That BMW looking very, very secondhand, like we've seen a couple of cars. Krobler was keeping it all clean, but what happened? Oh, just dropping a wheel off on the dirt and barreling into the wall. Oh, okay, May Marshalls to go and wave the yellow flag right in front of him. That just feels insult to injury, unfortunately. <laughs> that's just that's just in your face. <laughs> yeah, no, I've, I've been in the situation down at the ball where you land up with a stop and you got the marshals, the cameras, and also the spectators just staring at you, and it's just feeling like, well, that didn't quite go to plan. Try it again a little bit later on. Uh, what are you doing? I mean, they've just got that look on their face, haven't they? And unfortunately, it's something you will not forget, and neither will everyone else. <laughs> and you know <laughs> that, uh, unfortunately, you just push the boundary a little bit too hard. That drop of a wheel on the dirt is the most frustrating thing in the world because you just feel like a passenger. You are a passenger at that point, and you just know that that little bit too much you went that one centimeter a little bit too far to the left or the right and as soon as you drop a wheel on the dirt it spins up the car just throws you around and uh yeah you just don't quite know what to do interesting enough first to 15th place still to needing miller. to pit uh miller as you said getting a drive-through penalty so uh hmm why and now he has stopped and uh, trying to get himself going. So what happened to this was uh, Miller. It was just off to Cheetah on the last corner. Yeah. Was it for a track limit? Yes, it was. But what was happened afterwards? Track limit. And I think uh, he's just bailed out. That well, was him bailing out. As well. Yep. Not what you want to see, but I've got a funny feeling frustration kicking in. Realizing that just taking a little bit more pace through the corner, he felt they dropped a wheel on the dirt and unfortunately not having the fun time he wanted. And uh, the frustration just starting to build, especially right towards the end of the race. The drive through is just absolutely crippling at this point. And uh, we talked about track limits, how easy it is to score. There's one as you go through Cheetah, you take too much of the left-hand side, you still keep the pace up, but that drive through penalty lands up hitting you like a brick, getting you thrown through a glass window. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, it's not a fun feeling when you get that naughty badge that uh, tells you you need to take an extra pit through the, or extra trip through the pit lane. But on screen now, nice little battle. Starting to unfold between Hinkube and Planons. Hinkube has been slowly but surely closing that gap down from a second. 2.7. He is now half a second behind Planons. Really closing in, trying to make his way past. But uh, don't think Planons is going to make it very easy for him. As he runs wide, he all made it very easy. Never mind. Moving on, shall we? I do want to bring up that Daniel De Villiers is up six positions. Tenny Nkube is up six positions. And uh, they are the second highest. The highest is Johan Kleinans. Up 14 positions from where he started. Then you have got uh, the likes of Dean Kabasa up four positions from where he started. He's down in 21st position. Then uh, it starts going and evening out. Daniel Rowe up three positions from where he started. Justin Lotus up one position from where he started. Maeth Musa up two positions from where he started. Sanjin Pillay up two positions from where he started. So he's trying to get, keep the momentum going. Ramona Yonka up one position from where he started. And uh, Hansi Myberg up one position from where he started. Ryan Ottens keeping where he started. Christopher Radloff keeping where he started. Daniel Demetrius Pietro has uh, maintained where he started likes of Tunis Buerta maintaining where he started and Jakob Krubler maintaining where he started a couple of lose situations other than those that had to retire Q and Dupasi up in 5th place down 2 positions Nicolas Manuel down 1 position Ronaldo Boersma down 1 position Leclou Besson down 2 positions Henrik Sikers down 6 positions, SES days down 8 positions, bear in mind both of those cars have pitted so that is going to change, Cameron DeBastos down 2 positions, 
Kerry Dupasi down six positions. SM Domingo down eight positions from where he started. So a couple of drivers just not having those legendary runs that they hope to have. Yeah, and that's, uh, that's the unfortunate thing about racing. You can prepare yourself as much as you like, but unfortunately a race can just not turn out the way you want it to turn out. As we have a look at De Villiers fighting his way around, uh, he's got uh, Klingons not too far behind. But what happened to Nkube? He dropped back quite significantly. Yeah, Nkube has actually lost mm. the drive and it looks like he's trying to get himself maybe the tires starting to feel it we're down to 21 degrees it is getting darker those brake markers becoming harder to see and maybe just coming off a of gas at last lap time though was a 142.8 which is a lot slower than the cars ahead of him 142.090 done by Kleinons so Kleinons was able to get the the giddy up and go while in Kube having to just come off a throttle just ever so slightly maybe to try and stabilize the car through the corners Kleinons does pull into the pits so he's getting his pit stop down that is going to drop him down the Klubason jumping into the pits and that's going to allow his teammate Unrik Sikers to get past and the likes of the ZRC Air Force One SESAs to get a little bit more of a jump as well they're starting to climb that ladder and we're starting to see the pit stops in the final 11 minutes of the race Ryan Otten still leading out. Christopher Adloff in second place. Daniel Rowe in third. Daniel Demarchos Pietro still holding the fastest lap time of the race in fourth place. Kewen Dupasi in fifth. Sixth is Nicholas Manuel along with Justin Lotus in seventh. Eighth, Ronaldo Buisma. Mahayath Musa. Sanjin Pile in tenth position. In tenth position. Jan van der Merve in 11th, Daniel de Villiers in 12th, 13th is Tenny and Kube, followed by Anrik Sikers into 14th, 15th is SES Stays, Ramona Yonka, Johan Kleinant, Cameron de Bastos, Le Club just getting out ahead of Kerry Dupasi, who's in 20th position and is going to give him a proper run for his money as uh, he is now right on the back of Basson, who left the pits and is going to be trying to get some heat back into those tyres. Dean Cabasa in 21st. Tianas Buerta is in 22nd, 23rd is Sam Domingo, 24th Yoko Hrubla, 25th is Hansi Maiberg who is uh, parked in the pit box. Looks like he had to retire the car due to too much damage after his severe contact with the, the old pit wall. And that pit wall has uh, taken... It's had the test of time. Yes, it is. it has taken the lives of many cars over any other wall that's around Kyle Army. It's one of the original it's walls like, that's still there. <laughs> yeah, it's it's almost like Kyle Army's own wall of champions. Yes. Just, you don't want to be a part of that wall. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to have your your plaque or your your mark. You don't want to put your mark on that wall necessarily. No, no that's, uh, that's one that you want to avoid. I see Daniel de Villiers has pulled into the pits. That's a lot of SES days. And Andrik Sikers to uh, get a little bit more of a drive. So Daniel de Villiers getting out behind Romani Onka. And you can see very, very long pit lane to just try and get the drive and get yourself going. Utilizing the whole pit lane, keeping between the lines. Not cutting it because he knows that the stewards are keeping a very close eye on uh, how you exit the pits. You can't just gun it across the circuit. Otherwise, you're going to land up. And even doing that, you actually land up scrubbing more speed than actually helping you. So it's easier just to keep straight, run it right down to the end, and then try and curve your way back onto the circuit. Yep, that is true. And uh, Stephen, although the pit itself is not that long i mean we've got a relative short pit entry you come in at high speed you just off the cheetah hard on the brakes and then it's got that uh, very sharp left hander the pits lane itself as i said not that long but the pit exit where you need to keep to the racetrack is considerably long after you've actually left the pit lane yeah that's it and uh it's just to build up up to race speed the reason for that significantly long exit is actually to build up race speed because everyone is getting so quick down the main straight into the slipstream that 
if they made it shorter and you could move across it actually is considered a high danger for you to do it because you're moving at such a slow speed compared relatively to everyone else because you're going to be at 110 kilometers or 120 kilometers by the end of that pit lane if you follow it through any shorter you're going to be coming out at 80 kilometers an hour while everyone is getting closer to 190 200 kilometers an hour so uh, the relative speed coming into it and that's why it's a safety precaution Ronaldo Busma trying to keep back Mahayath Musa who's clawed his way back up through the field and uh, trying to make up a bit of time as well. Kleinan's getting ahead of Johan van der Merwe. It looks like van der Merwe just not able to have the same legs at him and uh, has backed out of it and decided, you know what, I'm going to keep into the train, follow you through as we battle our way through. Uh, does look like with it getting a bit darker, seven minutes and 38 seconds to go, all the drivers starting to become a little bit more tame, realizing that their vision now becoming a little bit harder to see as this is the view from Ronaldo Boersma's car and you can see there's not much you can go and look ahead after the headlights you're having to just trust where the headlights are and the cars in the distance become a little bit harder any sort of puff of dirt that gets kicked up by anyone dropping wheel on the dirt is like a smoke screen at the moment you need to utilize as much vision as possible Yes, it's true. And the other thing is, you know, spreading out a little bit more from the car in front of you, you know, it's a little bit easier on the eyes as well. Because let's face it, racing in the dark like this with the headlights and taillights going around the track does put a, little, a lot more strain on the eyes, Stephen, than what you would normally do racing in the middle of the day. Might sound, might sound weird from a sim, but it is actually the truth. And it's the reason because white light on a screen now you're looking at a screen let's say going at 60 hertz which is uh, 60 flashes per little second um and then you've got the all milliseconds let's talk about you know heading into milliseconds a white light is a lot more uh impactful on the eyes it starts straining the eyes more it's the reason why looking at a you know just having your chrome screen just white do yourself a favor at home go onto the internet right now set your phone to daytime mode have that white light while you're in the dark turn every light off and your eyes are having to try and adapt to that light coming in but everything else there is no light and it, it actually does put a lot of strain on the eyes it's a reason why we've got dark mode because having that bright light constantly in it can actually in the long run and i'm talking about a good couple of years will go and hurt your eyes and land up needing glasses by the end of it so it's something that the drivers are bearing in mind some of these drivers are actually wearing blue light glasses to help counteract that we're using blue light filters or just turning the the effects down ever so slightly so it just doesn't take as much strain onto the eyes as what we would have justin lotes is pulling into the pits though he's a first of our front runners and let's see where he will come out because he is trying to get going Tinian and kube comes by but let's see will he get ahead of unrik sickers does so so justin lotus now leading out everyone that's pitted he's just out of the top 10 and is uh, getting a little bit closer to the fight ahead Tinian and kube i do want to point out is 17 seconds behind sanjin pillay so just within that pit window and Sanjin Pillay will lose out of position to Tenny and Kube or Tenny can choose to back out of it or maybe Sanjin Pillay this is where you've got to start thinking about undercutting the field because the top 10 still needing to do that pit stop yeah and they are leaving it quite late now remember being the sprint race there is no pit window so they can pit literally on the last lap of the race or going into the last lap of the race don't quite know if it's going to allow you to to put on the last lap but uh it's only four and odd minutes to go Stephen. that's basically three laps around this track yeah and ryan otten's done 30 laps on his set of tires is going to keep going christopher radloff in second place daniel rowe in third daniel demontros retro keeping his hopes alive getting close in fourth then you got q and dupacy in fifth Nicholas Manuel in 6th, Ronaldo Boersma in 7th, Mahayath Musa in 8th, and 9th place is Sanjit Pile, along with Tini and Kube in 10th. At the moment, if Ryan Otten stays where he is, and if there is 
no time penalties put to him, he will be retaining the crown for his championship hopes. So he's hoping to keep the momentum. SM Domingo, though, has spun off. He's and lost that, momentum. Yeah, he has lost momentum. So let's see what's going to happen here. This was into Crocodile. Did he drop a wheel onto the dirt? Did he go out a little bit too far wide? Tim giving us a better camera angle into Cheetah. And he, Cheetah's now nearly invisible. And there we go. Cheetah in the dark is no easy thing. And it's what, you know, I think they named the Cheetah because you land up being the prey to that, uh, that little sausage curb there. Especially in the dark. It knows how to... Uh, hunt you down find you and take you out without a moment's notice well you were talking about ryan artens he's out in first place coming into this race he had a 55 point lead over second place man essie estrazen and as things stand now he's remember just, he still needs to pit he's gonna he's gone into the pits gap. he's gone into the pits daniel rose now in first daniel demartras petro up to second Q and Duper C. So Ryan Ottens pulling into the pits with Christopher Adloff as well. Nicholas Manuel also bailing into the pits. Mahaith Musa is going to try and jump all of them. Uh, Ronaldo Busma, Sanjin Pile, they are in the pits. Teddy and Kube is going to be staying out. One minute and 59 seconds though. Urgh, cutting it a bit short, cutting it a bit fine. And Ryan Ottens just getting ahead of Mahaith Musa. And Mahaith now trying to take the fight to Ryan Ottens on the exit as they both get a little bit more momentum and try to chase their way through. Christopher Radloff, though, he's trying to keep ahead of uh, Nicholas Manuel, who followed him. So Nicholas Manuel uh, managing to uh, get a little bit more of a run. I see Nicholas Manuel has not counted his pit stop, but he has done a pit stop. Maybe not position no, break in the box. That, that's it. I think oh. he wasn't put in the box correctly because he was stopped 5.2 but not positioned correctly and that's why it hasn't counted his pit stop that is something we have seen before if you slightly ajar from your pit your pit box you will land up going and losing out that pit stop which can impact it Tini and Kube dealing with Kleinanz, looking on the inside. Kleinanz tried his best, but Kube going defensive, and that's a light. Cameron DeBastos to get back into the fight. Daniel Rowe into the pits. Daniel Demartros. Petro coming into the pits. Q and Duper C into the pits, and I think that's going to push Ryan Artens back up into first place. But this little three-car train for 15th, 16th, and 17th is starting to uh, get a little bit aggressive right in the last 30 seconds of the race. I mean, everything's still to race for. The race is not finished yet, so they are going to go at it right until the end, trying to maximum, maximize every... Oh, Kleinons. Almost looked like he avoided Nkube. They're going to go side by side, but he's on the outside line, and that's going to allow Van der to stick his nose in as they go around down the mine shaft. Who is going to be last of the late breakers? These three are absolutely on it. Nothing between these three cars as they come down to Crocodile. Oh, nope. Looks like they're going to follow each other through maybe for one last time down the pit straight. Is there one more lap for them? There, there is one more lap as we heard Jim call out that Ryan Ottens is on his last lap. He's carving his way through the field. He's got Daniel Rowe in second place, Christopher Radloff. But there is a battle down in seventh and eighth, and that's Mahayath Musa and Justin Lotus are taking the fight to one another a little bit closer. So Ryan Otten's trying to get a little bit more momentum, and drivers just waiting for the checkered flag. The race has come alive towards the end. 20 degrees out on circuit. It is extremely dark. But out in front, Ryan Otten's now making his way down the mine shaft is going to be holding the position and if this is the case i do think will be retaining his crown because anyone in the championship that could have fought him is out of the top five so now this is turning into a battle but i think ryan ottens is going to be smiling mrs ottens is going to be really happy and owed a cup of coffee because now ryan ottens becoming a consecutive champion, a two-time champion as he crosses the line. Ryan Ottens taking the championship yet again. 
Daniel De Vill uh, Daniel Rowe in second place. Christopher Radloff in third. Daniel Demetrius Petro after a valiant effort in fourth place. Kuhn Dupasi in fifth. Ronaldo Bursma going to be taking sixth place. Mahayath Musa taking uh, the position. I see there was an incident with Kleinans, Tini and Kube. And uh, uh, that was a bit of a contact go there. So let's see if we can drop back and see what happened. What happened to them? Because this was a battle going on. Tini and Kube has got uh, likes of Van Merva right behind him. They tried going up on the inside of one of the Lamborghinis. And that was Kleinans going up on the inside of one of the Lamborghinis. Uh, that might have been uh, Daniel de Villiers. Oh, it gets caught up. And Kube runs into the back of him. And they land up having a bit of a contact situation between the two. And dropping down the order from it. So, uh... A rough time there. Le Clubison, though, coming across the line. And no. Kleinans has got no fuel. Oh, Besson's got no car. fuel. There's no fuel in that car. Nope. And there's no fuel in that car. And it doesn't go up the hill. Is that why Kleinans's car died? Is that the reason for the contact? Because there was no fuel. Lost the drive. Besson... He is trying every. You can see left, right, left, right. He is doing everything he can. <laughs> no, you don't. Go, don't go left and right. You're making it longer to the line. Just he's, keep it straight. No, he's trying to do it. Will he come past? Yes, he he's takes the flag. But Clay Nunes, It's not going to go up the hill. No, he's coming down the hill. It's the final corner. Go, little car. Go, little car. Go, little car. We believe in you. Come on. Hold the clutch in. Use the starter motor. Something. Don't go down <laughs> the gears. Whatever you do, don't go down the gears. Stay in the highest gear possible. Put it into seventh if you can. Oh, turning too much. No, straighten it out. Straighten it out. No, you're turning too much. You're not going to make it. Straighten it out. <laughs> this is like watching the race in extreme slow motion. And there's a problem. Down the gears. Nah, that's it. He tried. Little bit left, right, no. She's not gonna go. She's not gonna go. It was a good try. Good attempt. Unrick has managed to get it right. Kleinans stalling it out on the last lap. Oh man. And finishing in twenty second position. What a race. What a race. Oh wait, no, oh, he's gonna go. Wait, he's getting help! One of the drivers <laughs> helping him. Who is that? Number three, who is that? It's, I'm trying to see who that no, is. No, number three is Jan Kleinons. Okay, so who is it that's pushing him across the line? 184, something like that. Uh, 184, 184. Was that... That was one of the hybrid... Mm. I think that... Was that Q and Dupacy? No. Could that? It might have oh, been... 194. It could have been Q and Dupacy, 194. Q, yes, Q and Dupacy. Well done, Q and... Thank you for getting him across the line. How's that? How is that? But Kewen did that on his cooldown lap. He, he did that on the... Go. He drove around as fast as he could to push him across the, the line. You know what? Hats off. Hats off. <laughs> <laughs> on I... the chat. Thank you, Q, for the push. <laughs> <laughs> that was incredible stuff and it also brings the end of our round seven but i can say it's unofficial but i highly doubt it's going to change that ryan otters has become the champion for season 10 i think he's done just enough to get himself there well the thing is Stephen, if he does get penalties um you know the end of the day it needs to be a fair amount of penalties because uh, SES Raisin you know did not have the best of races he only finished up in 10th position and all that Ryan Ottens needs to do is finish in front of SES Raisin well then that confirms it then that confirms it that Ryan Ottens has scored the championship once again so Ryan Ottens congratulations on becoming a multiple champion for the GT3 Sprint Series brought to you by Raceface. But well done to all the drivers for round number seven as it was a proper race. 
right the way through the field. Everyone having to jockey for position, try and figure out what they can do. Going and persevering through stage six load shedding, four hour runs, and also to drivers that weren't able to make it, coming and joining up in the chat as well, which is absolutely incredible stuff. I love to see it. And uh, a big thank you to you guys, the families, the spectators, the teams, the drivers, all coming and joining us in the grandstands. What an absolute stellar race. And we saw all the highs and lows. We saw how dark it became and how the drivers had to persevere through some of the trickiest conditions that we've seen this season so far. But Kyle Army proving to be the home of the best of the driving, the home of the gold, one for a golly. And uh, what a phenomenal, phenomenal run. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, you know what? I'm going to do something that no one expected. Buy a moy. Buy a moy, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Stephen. <laughs> Got it horribly wrong, but you know. I, I thought, I thought we were going to do everything in Afrikaans tonight. Well, you know what? We're going to do something a little bit different. So let's go through what's to come up. Tomorrow evening, we have got the Grid Championship Round 6. And don't miss out on it. Grid Championship brought to you by Middle State, Race Face, and powered by MTN. Yes, you heard me right. MTN getting behind. And this is going to be them returning to Carl Army. So absolutely fantastic to see. Also, we have got Automobilista 2 on the 16th of September, Round 6. Heading out to Monza. Don't miss out on the open wheel action at Automobilista 2. Brought to you by Race Face. That is our first season of Automobilista and looks like it will be continuing in the future. Then we've got Race Face F1 2023. Been an absolute stellar event next week, 19th of September. They take out to Interlagos for round nine. It's going to be a fantastic run. Interlagos being a circuit that's, well, changed it all for the likes of Lewis Hamilton through the final corner with one of the cars breaking down on the final corner. We've seen cars running out of fuel. Will there be a change for the championship for the F1 2023? Well, you're going to have to find out 19th of September. Also happening on 19th is our final race of season one of our race face F4. It's been an absolutely great time. They're going to be booking it around Okiyama. Two 20-minute heats of racing. New drivers getting involved in the fight, especially for the final round. And they're going to be having a lot of fun championship yet to be wrapped up and uh, drivers going and pushing the boundaries of what they can do also coming up next week round eight we head out to bathurst and yes we are going through the mountain for the final round of the race face gt3 sprint series season 10 yeah, thank you with the bathurst 1000 this weekend i won't lie very tempted to at the moment to get a va car and go and pound around that circuit uh, out on i racing maybe i'll give it a try in the gt3s in acc but i know last time i drove there was in a, a gt4 and it wasn't my favorite circuit to uh <laughs> to go around I think you I saw, know what ktm or something like i was in a K, i was in a ktm lawnmower because i seem to spend more time on the dirt and following the guide rails up and down through the mountain maybe it'll be different in a gt3 but also ladies and gentlemen boys and girls what a run here at carl army it's been absolutely beautiful but gentlemen i think for the closing since we're here at carl army uh, we're going to have to say, uh, how do we, I would say uh, goodbye in English, but uh, Yadaman, <laughs> why don't you wrap it up in Afrikaans because you've been bugging me the whole time. I can't quite do it. Why don't you wrap it up in Afrikaans here at Carl Army for the Race Face GT3 Sprint Series Round 7. Done and dusted. Second last round completed of the championship. Take it oh. away, Yadaman Press. <laughs> Seeing that you're putting me on the spot. Just one last thing, Stephen. Very much looking forward to tomorrow evening. And uh, there's some rumor flying around that uh, Paul Pinkito Fenter is rebranding Cheetah for something. Not quite sure what it's all about. I'm sure we will find out during the course of tomorrow. But having said that, Stephen, you insisted in Afrikaans. So let's go for it. So, so everybody, goeiemorgen, goeiemiddag, goeienavond en goeienacht. We'll see you next time right here at Race Face. From myself, Stephen Koenig and Yanaman Price, thank you very much. And we'll see you next time. Bye!